studio, you were lucky enough to be tuned into a live stream. In the event that a lot of you were sitting around with nothing to do and bored out of your minds, I'm going to bore you even more. So let's, let's take a look at some of the stuff that's going on here. Let's go over to the drawing board here. <clears throat> this is something I do in the morning right here, or if I get bored. This is my sketchbook. I just started this today. And right now I'm practicing for uh, a project that I'm working on right now. And I'm also, uh, I've also been really big on <laughs> trying to learn pen and ink over the last, the last 40 years. And this is a, an artist named Orson Lowell. And <clears throat> you can see I started something up here, um, a failure. And then I started something down here based on this lady right here. And then <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another one of this girl right here. That's how I block it in right now before I go in with pen and ink. Everything is basically there. I don't need to do it anymore. Tighter than it is. <clears throat> so, to use pen and ink, you just need two things. You need pen and you need ink. <clears throat> Clever, huh? <clears throat> Before we get into the main event here, I'm going to show you some of the routines that I routinely go through um, on, on an average work day. So, let's go over here and show you some of the things that are really important in my life right now. <clears throat> The first one is the back thing. <clears throat> I don't know what it's called, I just call it a thing. <clears throat> Every artist needs <clears throat> to watch their back, and this is how I watch mine, <clears throat> even though I'm not watching it. So we do that, <clears throat> and we're all fit to go. Um, <clears throat> well, this might be interesting. Lately, we've been doing some uh, YouTube broadcasts. <clears throat> this is one of the paintings I did for the YouTube how to, which is a, which is an oil painting of Ivan, uh, blah 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 blah. I can't pronounce her last name. She must be Hungarian, but she's really pretty and she's blonde, so she gets points for that. <clears throat> so that's one of the things we're going to be showing in the how to. This is a recent painting I did of some model that came over. Uh, don't remember her name, <laughs> but this was fun to do. This is always a, a good practice for artists to get involved in in life painting. Uh, so this is painted from life. Um, and then later on, I take shots of her to finish it up, to give it that, that final gloss. And then I added the flowers because she, she likes her flowers. <clears throat> this is my friend, the Keed. I call her the Keed. Uh, when I met her, she was 24. Now she's 32. Boy, does time go fast. Uh, but I still called her the Kid. And this was done also as a live portrait. <clears throat> so those are some of the things I do when I'm, uh, when I'm, trying to learn how to get better. <clears throat> uh, let's move over to the, uh, the pastel station here. This is uh, a thing I'm working on. Now, I've never tried s working on pastel and sanded paper, but this is very sanded. <clears throat> the picture I'm working from is Princess, the girl I married uh, 26 years ago. And <clears throat> this is some of the picture that she sent me <laughs> when I was first uh, getting to know her. And uh, I just thought the picture was so adorable. So I'm I'm going to eventually um, go in there and finish this right here. But, yeah, you can you can see how uh, how the surface is very sandy. And I've never tried it before, but let's see how it works out. Uh, so I showed you some of the things I, I'm working on, some of the things I do during the day. But there's one thing that is more important than all others, and that is going to be over here. And I'm going to show it to you in a second here. This is my mini fridge. Now, without this mini fridge... There's a lot of things I can't do in, in my life that I already want to. <clears throat> One is uh, I can't, uh, can't dye my hair. So this is a very important thing to keep in the fridge right here. At 63, I'm starting to go a little grayer on the sides here. We can't have that, right? Unless I want to turn into George Clooney later on. Uh, well, that's later on. <clears throat> oh, this is the most important of all. Canned chicken, <clears throat> avocado, and uh, spare grass. <clears throat> now you're wondering why I keep, I keep this around. Well, it's important because lately, <clears throat> I think a lot of you people can identify with this. I've been starting to gain a little weight. Well, that's not acceptable for the Brood family. We've always been in shape. 
<clears throat> so when I really need to check things out to see how I'm doing, we get the scale out. And let's see how I'm doing here. Boy, that's cold. Well, that's unacceptable. But that's why I have these. Uh, moving on to the, some newer stuff here. Let's, let's walk over to the animation table. Given to me by the great Doug Wiley. Oh, what do we have going on here? Uh, <clears throat> here's some here's some Nexus layouts that I'm working on for the show that never is, but it will be someday. <clears throat> so this is a this is a, something I invented. It's a scene that doesn't exist in the comic book anywhere. <clears throat> but in the in the event that we could use something like this, I just had this idea that Nexus is entering an alien spaceship that has a really short doorway. Uh, <clears throat> so I I did this layout and I thought, well, what if Sunny Honey, his his friend. Uh, Sunny Honey, Sundra Peel is with him. So I just there's an overlay right there, right there, <clears throat> to put in there in the event that we want her to be in there too. So that's how it works. Uh, for close-ups, <clears throat> I blew up this drawing right here, pasted it in there, and then he's gonna look, obviously want to look around because he he can't just stay there static the whole time. So there's his head looking up. <clears throat> I'll probably add another one. See how that works right there? Just the head moves right there. Just like the old-fashioned Johnny Quest cartoons I grew up with, <clears throat> and then later on, I'm, I'm, later on, I'm going to put Sunny Honey in here too, and she's going to have her head looking around too. So, <clears throat> uh, moving, moving on here. Let's see what we got in the, on the drawing board here <clears throat> that I'm supposed to be working on. Let's move the pen and ink stuff over here. <clears throat> Some of you may remember. This cover from <clears throat> that I did for DC Comics. It was for a comic called Future Quest, and I was uh, asked to do the cover for Birdman. And I put a bunch of characters in there, but originally the painting did not start like this. I actually did another version of this comic book right here. And that is the main event that we're going to be working on today to show you how I work in these things. This is another version with even more HB characters that had been sitting around for a long time, <laughs> in 2016. <clears throat> but anyway, this thing is 20, 20 by 30 illustration board, and I'm going to be working on this uh, live uh, to keep you guys interested and not be bored on a Sunday here, uh, after church, of course. So <clears throat> this is a piece that I'm doing in watercolor and colored pencil. Uh, and this is a method that I find very uh, very difficult to figure out. I've been working on it for years now and I'm always trying to get a better grip on how this is done. So uh, to that end we're going to try, I'm going to try to show you how I go about rendering a piece like this. You can see Birdman is pretty much done. <clears throat> Igu the space ape from Herculoids is almost done. There will be a lot of touch-ups that go on after this but this is how I'm basically starting it. You'll notice a lot of characters are very dark. Well, that's because from here, I will go in with color pencil and <clears throat> and render the lights. Something that I've always had a, a kind of a fascination for. So let's take our color pencils here and move it over here. After we wipe this off, <clears throat> that's my watercolors right there. And this is the thing that I keep my color pencils in right here. Now I've got a few that I've been uh, I've been grabbing because they're the ones I seem to be using the most. <clears throat> so the cameraman's going to come right up here, and we're going to see exactly how this works right here. So this is let's just start on oh say Mitor. <clears throat> Pencil should be nice and sharp. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, give him a sense of outline here. Okay. Now, believe it or not, 90% of this is made up. Do I encourage you to do the same? No, not unless you have 40 years of training. But <clears throat> I don't need the reference that much anymore. I just, I just don't. I know how the human figure works. <clears throat> I know these characters really well. And <clears throat> luckily, I'm able to just basically work off uh, my accumulated knowledge and my imagination to make these characters look like I want them to. 
So that's how I'm going to start off. And let's see. He's got his cape like this. We'll wrap it around him a little bit. See how that works? Nothing to it, right, guys? Everyone can do this if they practice hard enough and uh, spend their Sunday trying to learn as much as they can. <clears throat> These are beloved HB characters, Hanna-Barbera characters that I've, I've known my whole life. And um, I grew up watching them on TV. And funny thing about <clears throat> these old shows, when <clears throat> and you, you younger guys can't even understand this, but when we, when these shows were done, when they were off the air, that was it. We thought we'd never see them again. And so what what's what starts happening? Well, they start doing these things called reruns and DVDs releases. So, <clears throat> lo and behold, we are now able, you guys are now able, and people like me, I grew up with them, to have access to these, uh, <clears throat> these old vintage cartoons from the 1960s. They were part of my youth. They're part of, probably part of your uh, um, long-forgotten uh, memories from <clears throat> your mom or dad. So let's see. Let's from there. Let's let, let me show you how this works right here and how I do it at least. Let's see. So we're gonna get one of these lighter colors right here. Let's pick this peach, orange kind of a color right here. Actually, my tour is maybe a little bit uh, grayer than that. Well, we can go over it with gray. <clears throat> we have a gray pencil right here. <clears throat> so we'll we'll do some layering here. Okay. <clears throat> See, this is going to bring out the lights. And you have to know anatomy. You have to know muscles. Otherwise, how could you do this? Because you are, in fact, working from uh, <clears throat> from memory here. Well, let's see. How does this work here? <clears throat> you can see how scratchy this stuff is. This, um, Like I mentioned, I'm working an illustration board here. <clears throat> and this is nothing more than... Uh, a piece of watercolor paper glued onto cardboard, hopefully acid-free. Not that anyone's worried about getting acid on them. And that's going to be a cast shadow. So so that's kind of the way the process works right here. You see, I'm just kind of uh, putting it on, and it's going to be layered a lot, too. I have to put colors upon colors. <clears throat> One thing I don't like about color pencil is... Uh, is the graininess. I've always complained about that. So I have to find a way to uh, <clears throat> make it look more like paint. The reason I use colored pencil is because uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's drawing, it's not painting. And you don't have to worry about other things <clears throat> like um, oh, <clears throat> value changes with paint. Because <clears throat> when, you <clears throat> when, you, when, you, when you work with watercolor, uh, it goes, it dries lighter. When you work with opaque paint, any kind of opaque paint, water base, it goes on, um, <clears throat> it dries much darker. <clears throat> and that drives me a little bonkers sometimes. What color do we want to use here for <clears throat> his cape? Let's, I think this is kind of a brownish cape right here. And, and the good thing is if, <clears throat> if you make a mistake, there's something called an eraser. I think you're all familiar with that. <clears throat> and from there, we can we can go in and change it. Now that's obviously too green for me. So, what are we going to do here? We're going to add a. Let's try this brown right here. That'll already kill it. I already killed the the green part of it right there. Uh, my tour is a character that's really huge. Uh, he can move boulders, he can throw boulders, <clears throat> which is um, something that I advise all of us to practice in our spare time if you want to get really strong. So <clears throat> that's the way this works. Now, <clears throat> if I want to smooth this graininess out, which is common to all papers, you got to press a little harder because all you're doing at this point is filling in the little gaps. You see the gaps there? And you see the n almost no gaps there. And that's the way this, this stuff kind of works. I'm carving out the form 
in with light. <clears throat> this is kind of a medium tone. <clears throat> the darks can go in, uh, assuming I want to make some parts darker right here. This is kind of a good tone right here for the shadow area anyway. Remember, we're outside <clears throat> in sunlight, so <clears throat> sunlight works in a very specific way. It's not the same as a cloudy day, and it's not the same as indoor lighting. So you want to keep that in mind when you're doing this kind of stuff. These are all things you have to know when you're when you're going to be an illustrator. Um, because to me, being an illustrator is honestly the highest calling you can have. <clears throat> because as an illustrator, you have to um, you have to be able to draw or paint anything based on the assignment. Most most of my assignments are self-generated. Like, <clears throat> for example, this one right here. Now let's see. He's got. Uh, <clears throat> let's move over here. I've got some reference here on on my tour. My tour. <clears throat> okay, so there he is. So this this area up here is kind of brownish. <clears throat> so let's grab a brown, <clears throat> and we're gonna color that little area in up there. My tour. Everyone had a theme song, <clears throat> and in every theme song you heard the, the hero scream his name, which I think is important because otherwise. You know, you'd forget what show you were watching here. <clears throat> this is a dark purple right here, and I'm going to use that for the cast shadow. So you're basically just kind of working it and working it and working it. <clears throat> so the outside of his <clears throat> outside of his cape is this brownish kind of color. Remember, I told you about erasing. Well, this is Prisma color that I'm working with, <clears throat> and you can erase it enough. to get it in there. Oh, what I need here is, uh, is a different kind of green. This green is all wrong. So let's grab this kind of really, really dull green right here. Yeah, that's much more in keeping with um, the very carefully chosen apparel that Mitor uh, made his costume out of right here. Sometimes you can, if you want to make things recede, you can take that same green color, which is kind of a receding color, and just put it in here too. See, the form goes around like that. Even though I'm drawing things in outline, <clears throat> I am smart enough to remember <clears throat> that these forms, when you're drawing them, actually go around. You gotta, I, that's how I think of them. I think of them the way an animator does. <clears throat> it's not just a bunch of wire lines, uh, <clears throat> outlines. It's, it's also a bunch, of, uh, <clears throat> it's a bunch of forms that go around in space. Kind of like my mind sometimes when I'm really tired. Okay. <clears throat> uh, also, don't be afraid of black. A lot of people are afraid of that. <clears throat> Steve Rude does not I use it all the time. You want to get something dark? Get out the black, okay? Here's my tour's club. And this is not something you want to mess with. This club will just send you into dreamland uh, back to the Stone Age, which, in fact, is where he's from. So if you want to get something really dark... Never mind the burnt umber and the ultramarine. Just pull out the black and make life easy for yourself. See? Dark, dark, dark. We have to render this foot this right. I'm sure there's a few folds down here. So <clears throat> hopefully the things that I'm showing you right now are going to be uh, things that are important. Now, what kind of belt is my throw? He has a, a, he has a, a, a yellow belt. <clears throat> which I think everyone should have in case of emergency. <clears throat> so he doesn't need a black belt, like some of you karate guys out there. He just needs a yellow belt. So <clears throat> you saw I erased some of that area. This is to make way for the colored pencil. Now, you, for the people out there <clears throat> that have watched some of these YouTube demonstrations, these people show everything at a super high speed. Nobody can tell what they're doing. They don't talk about how they're doing it. So those things are worthless. Um, and these, some of these videos come from some of the best people out there. Well, <clears throat> am I going to subject you to that? No, of course not. I'm much more thoughtful than that. There's his teeth right there. Uh, if I decide he doesn't have teeth... Pull it out, and uh, <clears throat> he's just going to have a dark mouth. I don't know how this is going to look, so I'm just going to do it, okay? 
I think that might work actually better. Who knows? <clears throat> when you have things, when you have your your mouth open, <clears throat> you know, besides catching flies, you know, you never quite know uh, if the teeth are going to be shown or not, especially if they're in shadow. So you see what I've got going on there? My tour! And this is Birdman! And this is Space Ghost. The Herculoids, hmm, I'm not sure what they have. <clears throat> they need to get with the program here, because I don't think they have a, someone screaming their name out. Okay, so... <clears throat> this is actually a... Uh, oh, what color is this right here? This is kind of a bluish, a, a turquoise color. So let's just kind of <clears throat> tone the thing like this. Now, this is important what I'm going to show you guys right here, so I hope you're taking notes at home. <clears throat> this is a uh, this is a flap that's going up right there, so that's going to be in shadow, according to what I know about light and shadow and how that works. See, that's a black, black pencil right there. <clears throat> so we've got the turquoise in, and if I want to lighten it, well, <clears throat> you just have to grab a lighter pencil right here, and I know you guys all know this stuff. I don't mean to embarrass you or insult you. We have a lot of geniuses in, in Steve Rude's audience here. <clears throat> but that's one of the ways, in case you don't know, in case you're on your way to being a genius, to lighten up something. So <clears throat> now we've got my tour fairly well rendered here. Now we need to make some things darker. Let's grab, what are we going to grab here? Where's that dark blue that I'm working with here? <clears throat> this is indigo right here. This is, I know this is going to kind of be in shadow. I've done so many life studies and so many uh, pots and pans and flowers and eggplants that I kind of know how this stuff is going to work. But in case I don't, <clears throat> I pull out the reference. Do we have any reference here? Oh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Birdman's Wings. Now, I haven't, <clears throat> I saw this on a TV. It's from a statue. I don't know what statue it's from. Probably something in Rome. That's where all the statues are. And so to do this, this wing reference right, I need to, uh, I need to get some kind of reference to show me uh, how to do wings with some authority here. So we're going to do something like this. <clears throat> Look at the reference. Uh, wings, uh, I was studying wings a little bit ago. In fact, I had to do it for this study right here. But birds, <clears throat> birds have certain feathers arranged in a certain way. Uh, not that I'm going to do it like that. I'm basically just going to do what looks good. If you guys don't mind. But don't share that secret with anyone, okay? You can tell your friends, but <clears throat> don't tell your enemies. These are very carefully guarded secrets right here. <clears throat> so according to this, we have these layers of feathers going on here. <clears throat> these are kind of shorter ones up here, see? And these, these other feathers are the longer ones. So <clears throat> when we get done doing something like this, <clears throat> we're going to put the longer ones in and vary the strokes because you don't want to <clears throat> make something uh, that comes from nature or a lab, in this case, <clears throat> too mechanical looking. So that's why we're going to do something like this. Now remember, if you if you make a wrong move, not something I know that any of you are going to do, but in case you do, <clears throat> you can erase it. <clears throat> get the eraser out, get the needed eraser out, <clears throat> or get a stronger one like this pink one right here. <clears throat> Everyone's worked with pink erasers because we all went to school, right? <clears throat> now the bummer here is that this guy's head is is not going to be in front of his wings. So what I've got to... <laughs> <laughs> what I've got to do eventually here is draw over his head, <clears throat> this carefully drawn head, <clears throat> and disguise it to look like it's kind of see-through because I want to show his head. Oh, how are these feathers looking here? I need to reverse one of these right here so I can do this one a little better. You see, people, this really isn't that hard. You just need 40 years of in-and-out practice, uh, daily mental anguish, and <clears throat> eventually it'll come to you. Yeah, we need a couple more things in here, and then we're gonna be we're gonna be cooking here, and then <clears throat> for so they have to go over Shazam's head right here. I almost called him Shazam, which he's not. So <clears throat> this is gonna come over Igu's face like this, and 
<clears throat> so all this is going to have to be obliterated at some point. <clears throat> but just enough to show his head. <clears throat> you see how I worked on him right up here? <clears throat> He's just enough for me to go in. I darken his skin just a little bit so I can <clears throat> eventually go in. Uh, I'm going to take reference for this right here. I'm going to shoot myself in the mirror, uh, not in the head, in the mirror, <clears throat> to see exactly what this looks like. Now, I've drawn these folded arms a million times, but you can never be too good unless you're an Einstein of some kind or someone with, <clears throat> what do you call those things, a didactic memory or something? Well, in, in any case, we grew up calling it a photographic memory, so <clears throat> uh, I have no camera in my head, so... <clears throat> so I'm going to need a camera shooting pictures, and I encourage you all to do the same. Uh, these smiles are very tough right here. You, if you want to learn how to do smiles, you need to you need to remember the mechanics. Now, what does he look like right here? Where is that? <clears throat> there he is, Shazam, and the Lord of Shadows. I surely want to better up some. <clears throat> on these cartoon shows, they had people working on um, an assembly line, which is the only way they can get this out right here. Now, <clears throat> when I draw this, I'm remembering that certain uh, Arab types have these very specific kind of noses. They have flaring nostrils. Now, if that's, if that's too flared, then I'm going to have to knock it down a little bit. But uh, you see, in these eyes, you know, they, when, you, when you smile, the the lower lids get pushed up. Now he's he's also Oriental, so uh, I'm going to make sure I have to study those eyes maybe a little bit longer. Uh, the cheeks get pushed up. You see, they get it like that. I'm sure you guys all know that stuff, being the, the smart audience that I that I've always engendered. And he's bald uh, long before it came into fashion. You see how that works right there? Remember, if you have a problem, just erase it right there. <clears throat> now, his uh, some of this stuff here is gold. So let's just grab our yellow. And let's see if this goes on okay. Now, if I see some of those lines coming through and I don't want that, okay, <clears throat> well, you know where to turn to. Your best friend starts with an E. Let's see if this goes over right now. And then from there, we can we can render it with different colored pencils. Now, he's got these gold armbands, too. Now, you see that going on really grainy right there? That's something you have to ha I have to deal with later on. Of course, the wings are going to overlap. <clears throat> so, anyway, so <clears throat> to do this right, you have to... You have to know how metal works. Metal is not like... Uh, something that a pillow is made of, <clears throat> unless you want to sleep on a metallic pillow. <clears throat> it's got reflections. It reflects what's around it. <clears throat> First, it has a color to it. In this case, the color is yellow. It's made of yellow metal. <clears throat> and the rest of it is <clears throat> is got reflections uh, based on a, on a yellow color that... Um, are reflections of what's around it. So <clears throat> if this rock ape here is is uh, is next to him, well, that's going to be what's reflected in it. <clears throat> Still having said all that, I pretty much just do what looks good. See, it, and obviously these things are going to follow the form right here. <clears throat> At some point, uh, the, the dark areas seem to be coming down the bottom here, and I think they kind of work like that. You know, if, now, if I need to check these out, and often I will, <clears throat> I will just grab uh, something around the house that's metallic. Grab your pots and pans, and uh, and see how these things work. Uh, there's nothing worse than, a, than, a, than an illustrator who does not do his homework. He's got dark skin. <clears throat> the light is kind of coming this way <clears throat> on him, <clears throat> not super overhead. Otherwise, he'd be or behind him, because otherwise he'd be backlit. So I just start to render things like this. <clears throat> Remember, I uh, I've been working on anatomy since I was uh, 
living in the dorms, uh, the Madison, Wisconsin dorms, <clears throat> from a long time ago. And I practice, 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 because I don't want to be bad at something. I didn't want to be great. I just don't want to be bad. You guys know what I mean. Okay. So here's what we're going to do here, <clears throat> because I realize that uh, you guys probably have an attention span worse than mine. <clears throat> uh, we're going to um, <clears throat> we're going to go meet back here, in um, in about a in about a half hour. How's that? And we're going to see how some of these things have been developed and and how I end up solving some of this problem. So <clears throat> take a, la a last look at that. <clears throat> and take a la last look at Mitor and the wings of Birdman. And hopefully if I work fast enough, <laughs> um, <clears throat> then you'll see how I ended up uh, finishing these figures you saw me starting today on uh, the Steve Rude live stream. So we see we'll see you in a little bit, okay? We'll let you know when it's going to happen to give you plenty of warning. And adios for now. We'll see you in a bit.